Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I'm gonna try to answer what is the best wall mount for an ultra wide monitor? Now, even if you don't have an ultra wide, this video will be very helpful to you, but I did wanna focus on that ultra wide. I'm gonna break it up into a couple different things. So first, you need to know what kind of monitor are you working with? It'd be helpful to know, you know, how big is it? 34 inches, 39 inches, 49 inches. Is it curved or is it flat? And how much does it actually weigh? Now, the reason I ask why it's, is it curved or flat is because when you're shopping for a wall mount, you're gonna see something like, hey, this one can hold 15 pounds. And maybe your monitor is only 15 pounds, but if it's curved, I can show you where it actually attaches to the mount right here. You know, it's trying to hold up 15 pounds, and if that 15 pounds is in the same plane as where it attaches, it might be able to support it. But you can see when it's curved, some of the weight of this monitor right here is out in front of where it actually attaches. It's not in the same plane, it's out in front, which is gonna create some leverage and it's actually gonna amplify the weight. So even though this might be 15 pounds, it might actually feel more like 25 pounds out on the edges because it has a tendency to push it down since that weight is moved from that plane out there. The other thing I wanna break down into is what exactly are you wanting out of your wall mount? So obviously we're trying to get the monitor up off the desk onto the wall. Now, with that being said, there's actually five different ways a wall mount can move your monitor if you need movement at all. I'm gonna cover those five different ways and if you want all five, you're definitely gonna be in the higher price point. But if only one is important to you, you'll definitely be able to find a good price point. And I think you might even be surprised, at least I was, at how cheap you can actually accomplish something. And then at the opposite end of that spectrum, for a really well-built one that can handle a lot of weight, like a 49-inch ultra-wide that's curved, it gets pretty expensive as well. Something else to keep in mind is the amount of movement varies. And the more movement you have, often it costs more. So I'm gonna start with the movements that are most expensive and then work my way to the movements that are least expensive. So the most expensive movement is gonna be the ability for your screen to go up and down. So right now, this would be in the up position and then I could have you know, a height adjustment to where I can bring that screen down. That right there is gonna be your most expensive movement. And at the same time, whether that's 10 inches of movement or 20 inches of movement, that is also gonna change price. The more movement you have, there's a tendency for it to cost more. So the other type of movement that would be the second most expensive is the ability to push it back up against the wall and then be able to pull it out towards you. And again, the more movement you have there, the more it tends to cost. All right, now it's also important to note there that just having one of those, like being able to adjust the distance from the wall actually isn't too bad. But if you want both the ability to adjust the distance as well as the height, combining those is it's gonna get more expensive versus just having one. Now the next one is, is tilt. So sometimes it's easier to show from the side angle, the ability to tilt this back and have it stay, that's gonna cost money as well. So with the other ones, the range of motion is gonna be big but really you don't need a ton of range of motion with tilt usually, and that isn't gonna affect the price as much as whether or not the tilt is on a spring or if you need to adjust it with a tool. So there's two kinds of tilt. The first one is, you know, you just move it and it stays there, okay? I move it down, you know, since this is up and I want it to be down towards me, I can tilt it down and it stays there. There's no tool needed. The other kind is when you actually have to take a tool and loosen something you know, adjust the tilt and then tighten it up so it stays where you tilted it. Those are the two different kinds of tilt and naturally, if you don't need a tool, it's gonna to become more expensive versus if you need a tool. Now, if you're not gonna be adjusting the height very much, you probably don't need to adjust the tilt that much, but if you do adjust the height, you know, it is nice to be able to tilt it down towards me or if this is all the way down towards the bottom, sometimes I'll even tilt it up so that I'm looking down into the screen and that is an important feature, at least it was for me. The last two kinds of movement is swivel, which is actually pretty common and doesn't really have as much of an effect on price. And that is this hinge right here. So if you, if you have the ability to move the screen on a swivel, that's another kind of movement. So wherever that arm is, it stops, and then the ability to swivel the uh, screen. And then the last kind of movement, which for me wasn't important, but for some people it may be, and I'm not sure if you'd really want to use it if you have a curved monitor, 
is the ability to switch it from landscape to portrait mode or to just even tilt it at all if you want to. So this, this one actually you can tilt you know, a full 360 degrees, but if you wanted the monitor to be straight up and down, you have the option to do that. Um, and that is the five different degrees of movement. All right, before I jump into the different options that I found, I wanted to help interpret and translate the terminology you're gonna see when you're shopping for a wall mount. Now the first thing is, is how it actually connects to your monitor. Nearly all of them are gonna have a VESA connection to your monitor. So you can just Google, hey, is the connection for my monitor VESA? And if it's not, you're gonna need to buy or find some kind of adapter. Otherwise, it just isn't gonna work. And you know, for my monitor, actually, I'm pretty sure it came in the box. It comes with an adapter and I threw that out. So I had to go to Samsung and actually order the part. So double check that because it stinks when you get a new wall mount, you're excited to install it. You get halfway done and realize I can't actually connect the monitor. That's what happened to me. So that's, that's one part. Now the other part is how they quantify if your screen is gonna be compatible with the mount in terms of will the mount support that size of a monitor. They quantify it in two different ways. First is they talk about screen size and another way they do it is they talk about weight. Now unfortunately, if they're talking about screen size and you're shopping for an ultra wide, you know, this is a 49 inch ultra wide monitor, but when they say it can support a 49 inch screen, they're talking about like a TV where it has that typical aspect ratio and it's not a long elongated aspect ratio. So it's not really apples to apples. And in my opinion, it's, you can't use that measurement to see if it's gonna be compatible with your screen. Now, the other way is weight. And you know, it'll say this one holds up to 17.1 pounds. And again, at the beginning of the video, I went over how even that is hard to use when you're shopping for a curved ultra wide monitor because that weight is out in the front. And to make that even more complicated, not all ultra wides are the same. You know, a Dell might have less weight out in the front versus a Samsung has more and vice versa. So it, it becomes very hard and, and you really just don't know. So your best bet is if you have a big ultra wide monitor is to find the movement that you're looking for and find the one that can hold the most weight at the best price point. And that's exactly what I did. I'm gonna walk you through the different options I found, increasing the amount of movement at each step, but also we're looking at the ones that could hold the most weight at the best price. And you'll see, I think they're great price options. Now you might be able to, as we move our way up, find one that's a little bit more cost effective, but when you read the description and check the weight, it's gonna be a low weight. And I just don't think it would support a heavier monitor like this one. But again, there's no way for me to truly know that without buying it and trying it. And that would just take way too long. So with that being said, let's just jump into the options. All right, so here's our very first option. And this has no movement, but we are accomplishing getting our monitor that's on a stand off of the desk and putting it up on the wall, freeing up a ton of real estate on the desk. And in my opinion, it just looks cool. And I mean, for $7, you're really not gonna be able to beat that price point. And you can also see it says it supports 35 pounds, which is gonna support all ultra wide monitors. So for only $7, you don't have any movement, but you're getting it up on the wall. I really don't think you're gonna find a better option than this, and that's gonna be our first one. So now, if we add on another seven bucks for $14, you're gonna get a lot of extra movement. The biggest thing with this one is you're able to 15 inches, push it up against the wall, and then pull it out 15 inches. You're also gonna get the ability to swivel the head of the monitor, which is very helpful. And they even allow on this one a tilt You'll see it has this lock screw here. So if you're gonna adjust the tilt, you are gonna need to use a tool, but still just the ability to adjust the tilt, it's not gonna be a wide range of motion, but that at, at $14, you're really not gonna beat that price point. It says it holds 44 pounds. So you also know this is gonna support all ultra wide monitors. And again, just at that price point for the kind of movement you're getting, you're not gonna find a better deal. Okay, so if we go up another $7, for $20, you're able to now adjust the height. And it says 250 millimeters, that's roughly 10 inches. And you can see this one supports up to 28.6 pounds. I know that this would support my monitor based on some of the ones that I tried. I have one of the biggest ultra wide and heaviest ones. I think it'll support almost all of them. 
Now, you are giving up some movement, so let's look at some of these pictures here. If you wanted to be able to push the monitor back up against the wall, you can do that, but you're going to be off to the right or the left by a pretty good distance, so it's not the same kind of movement as the one we just looked at. So for this particular model, it would be, hey, you're mostly gonna have it fully extended out in front of you, and you're just gonna be adjusting it up and down. You do have the ability to swivel, which is awesome, and you can even adjust the tilt. I am 95% sure you need a tool to adjust it, and if you didn't need a tool, I don't think it would support the weight, but I'm pretty sure there isn't a spring here and it's adjusted by a tool. But Again, great option, $20. Now it's up off your desk. You can move it up and down. You can adjust the tilt with a tool and you can even have some swivel. What you're not able to do is move it back and forth in a straight line. You are gonna be having to go to the far right or the far left, but again, for $20, this is an amazing option and price and it's gonna support heavy monitors. So again, I just don't think you're gonna find a better deal. Okay, so when we jump up to the next level, for only $50, you're able to get four out of those five ranges of motions we talked about, and this one says it supports up to 50 pounds, so it'll have no issues supporting a ultra-wide heavy monitor. Now, the reason I say four out of the five, if you look at this picture, it claims it does all of them, but this rotate, you can rotate it six degrees, so I don't know why you'd kind of want to just cockeye your screen off to the right or left a little bit. That's kind of weird to me, but you don't have the ability to put it from landscape mode into portrait mode, so that's why I said you're only getting four out of the five, but you can see it swivels 180 degrees, you can tilt it, you can move it 18 inches out from the wall, and you have 10 inches of height adjustment. Adjustment. and it's only 50 bucks and since it holds 50 pounds you have no issues supporting the monitor weight okay so another interesting thing is when you're shopping for a wall mount it's really hard to determine if you're gonna need a tool to adjust the tilt and you know for this particular one I had to go deep into the questions and answers to be able to even figure that out and I found that was pretty common they, they kind of leave that out and leave it vague but I believe that's what you're paying for most with the next price jump well you'll see we're gonna more than double the price and in my opinion that's the main thing you're paying for is the ability to adjust the tilt without needing a tool which you know it's a difference of five second adjustment to maybe a minute or two to adjust it with a tool so it's a huge convenience factor and I think that's what you're paying for with that being said you also get more range of movement you can see this one has 10 inches of height adjustment and you can pull it out 18 inches from the wall this next option you're able to pull it out 25 inches from the wall and you have 13 inches of height adjustment and the tilting mechanism is done with a spring so it's just a lot more convenience and you can see this jumps up to hundred and fourteen dollars now I did buy this less than two weeks ago and it was only a hundred dollars so I'm not sure if they just increased the price or what's going on but you might want to shop around a little bit see if you can find it better I do know they sell them used as well so if you wanted to explore that option but this is a great arm for a monitor now it if you look in the description and try to figure out you know what how big of a monitor can this support in terms of weight it doesn't actually say I did find in the comments that the user manual set up to 25 pounds but the reason I bought this is I saw another video and he used this mount and had a 49 inch Dell and it supported it no problem so I assumed it'll support my 49 inch ultra wide curved Samsung no problem same kind of monitor but it didn't the spring for the tilt mechanism wasn't strong enough to support it and it would droop down now the spring that adjusts the height adjustment was more than powerful enough so I know you know my monitor wasn't too heavy for this spring it could actually support a heavier monitor but the amount of strain it put on the tilt it would just droop down and it wouldn't support it now the reason I bring that up also is that's what I believe you're paying for. There is a way you can modify it to where basically you're just going to lock in that tilting like you would with a tool. I use zip ties as you can see here, but you know, you might as well just find one with a tool if that's the option that you're going to go with because it looks a lot better and you're not going to have that there. And that's why it's so hard to shop for the best wall mount for your screen if it is curved and it is an ultra wide because there's no way to know before buying and trying it unless you've seen another video like this one so I know for the Samsung 49 inch ultra wide it does not work but you can easily just search YouTube for another video and you'll see it's a 49 inch Dell curved ultra wide and it does actually support it the only difference was is that it was for a desk mount where you can see it's connected to the desk but 
if you actually look at the product, it's the exact same from this point, the way it connects. So that's why I say it had to have been the monitor and not the way that it was designed. All right, so your next jump up is this guy and it's quite a step up in price. You know, it's showing $270 here. You can see I actually did just pick this up for $204 less than a month ago. So I would definitely shop around. I'm not sure why it's gone up in price. This little app right here says you can pick it up for $225 still. And so we're more than doubling the price again, depending on what price you get it for. And really all that I wanted that the Amazon one couldn't do was the tilt mechanism that actually holds the monitor here to be able to support the weight of a 49 inch ultra wide that's curved. And I'm happy to say it, it handles it no problem. I'm sure it could handle a lot more weight. Okay, so that's a big price to pay just to be able to tilt it and have it stay in place. But the Amazon basic one wasn't strong enough to hold this specific monitor. Now they do everything the same almost. Uh, the Amazon one actually claims to have 13 inches of height movement where this one only has 11 and a half. So a little bit of difference there. Um, I measured it, they come out the same amount from the wall, about 25 inches, so nothing different there. And I just wanted to note, like, this one definitely feels like higher quality. It glides and is easier to manipulate than the Amazon one, but they do the same stuff, so it's not really that big of a deal. Now, I will say, you know, when you're trying to do something like, I'll push this guy up against the wall here. And I'll go down. If I want to go down further, I'm kind of afraid to put a lot of stress on my monitor. So I'll actually like push on the arm. I just feel like it's safer that way. And just some little things to know. And then when I actually like pull it out from the wall, you know, sometimes I'll want to actually grab back here on the arm to get that full extension and to manipulate it. And that was true with both of them. I just thought it's important to note like, it's not like you can just move it around super easy. There is some resistance there and it's not, you know, the easiest thing in the world. This one is easier than the Amazon one. The joints are greased up and a little bit better build, but just wanted to show kind of roughly the range of motion so you could get an idea. I find I use it most, I'll have it low and back. And, you know, after a couple hours on the computer, my back's like hunched over and whatnot, I'll start to hurt and then I'll, bring it out and raise it up, tilt it down, and it kind of forces me to sit back in my chair and have better posture. And then I can do that for a few hours until, you know, my neck starts to hurt or something. Just being able to move it around allows me to work a little bit longer. And at the end of the day, two biggest reasons I got it and why I like it is I have a very big desk and it frees up a ton of room so I can put papers and other things. And other than that, I mean, let's be honest, it looks freaking sweet, like, you know, sci-fi, futuristic, I just love the way it looks and uh, it's very practical for my needs. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to actually install this. And I installed it into a stud. And I just wanna say, you definitely can't just put this in drywall. It's Drywall is not gonna be strong enough. They do come with anchors, but those anchors are for if you're gonna go into concrete. And just from doing past projects, a drill like this is not gonna drill into concrete. You actually have to buy a hammer drill. So if you're trying to install it and you can only put it on a concrete wall, like in your basement, and it's not finished or something, you are gonna need to get a hammer drill if you don't already have one to screw into, those con into that concrete. So in that case, you might wanna look at something that attaches to the desk as opposed to actually into the wall. But I really didn't want anything attached to my desk so I could have full utilization of the real estate on my desk. All right, so the most common install for the Amazon is you tie into a stud. Take a stud finder, find it. I use the level just to make sure, you know, I'm straight up and down. With these bolts that you bolt in, you use a drill and you pre-drill the holes. Then you um, tighten these up into the stud, get it nice and square. They have these little covers that are gonna cover up the bolts so it looks nice and clean. There's one on the bottom as well. It does look really nice and clean. Then you're going to attach the first arm, which looks like this. It's a real easy attachment. Throw it on there like that. Next, what you actually do is you're actually going to attach the other arm straight onto your monitor. And like I mentioned before with the Samsung, you need this special plate adapter, this uh, circle. But you tie that into there. Then you lift this whole piece up to all at once together. And just like you slide this in, here, just like that, right here, you slide that piece in and then it holds up the monitor. That's actually it. They do have 
for your wires. This guy, it's real easy. You just grab right here, you pinch, and it comes out. You can put your wires, come up right in here, run along there. And then there's these little hooks that you use zip ties to hook it in. So you can see there's a zip tie here, and I know it's dark, you can't really see. You come in and you hook it there. So it gives it a nice, pretty clean appearance. You can tuck these up. You want a little bit of slack in the wire for when you're moving it around, it doesn't put tension on it. But I think it's overall good design. So this is when I fully tighten that spring that adjusts the tilt. And you can see, you know, it's definitely like, if I let go, it'll just swing. Not enough to hold it in place. And you know, it's just gonna go all the way to the bottom there. So my workaround is, you know, you take these zip ties and I'll get an angle that you can actually see it. There's a little bit of room here where you can thread this. And I put a couple zip ties here. And then I thread this through both of them. And then I come down here and thread this zip tie. See how that goes. And see, obviously I went a little too far there, which sinks because you gotta cut and start over. But you can adjust it to where it's right, and then it's kind of set at once and forget it, um, unless you wanna mess with the zip ties a bunch. And like I said, if that's the case, you're probably better off just going with that kind of mount where you set it once and forget it. But this is a workaround if you are, you know, really like the range of motion that the Amazon Basic offers, but don't wanna spend the extra money to get one more heavy duty. And now I'm going to put up the other mount and show you how that does. The Ecotron is very similar. You uh, have actually the exact same uh, screws that go into the wood, except this time you have a plate and the, that part fits on the plate and then you notch it in. I'll show you here in a second. The same thing, you pre-drill some holes, use the fourth uh, size drill bit, pre-drill the holes, and then we'll tighten them up with these guys and attach this plate real tight. Here's the uh, base part that actually goes on there. And then you have this little Allen wrench screw to tack it in place. So similar to Amazon, the next step is to put this on. There's some grease in there and I can tell by this connection, it's already a lot higher quality than the Amazon. Should glide and slide a lot better. Plus this thing just feels, you know, more heavier duty, which you'd expect for more than double the price or double the price, so. Um, I think this just slides on in, yep. Another thing I can already tell that I like with this build quality is, you know, you attach all this and then you put the monitor on before you had to attach the actual arm with the monitor. And if you have a big one like mine and your desk is too heavy to move where it's like, I'm just gonna manhandle it, it was pretty tough. Um, where this one I can tell is just gonna be a lot easier. I mean, you can tell these springs are like, four times the size of the last one. Put it there and it comes down. So there's this little screw right here that I tighten. See if that... Looks like that did the trick. Thanks for watching, see you next time.